Hey guys, JV here with another edition of my Mass Effect Andromeda Pathfinder Guide Series. And this time we're covering Strike Teams, which is a mini game that rewards the Pathfinder for sending small squads on tactical missions. In this video, we'll talk about how Strike Teams work, how to use them in single player and multiplayer, and a short look at the companion app that you can also use. Don't worry, this video is spoiler free like all of my guides during the first few weeks. Before we move on, just a reminder that you'll find Andromeda tips and tricks guides, multiplayer, and my Strike Streamed playthrough on this channel. I'm going to take a day off today. I know I said I'd stream all week, but I'm going to go ahead and rest up tonight. But we will be back and ready for a Friday night stream tomorrow night and throughout the weekend. So if any of that content interests you, be sure and subscribe. Let's start with some general information about Strike Team. So first off, number one, most importantly, it's completely optional. You don't have to play this minigame if you don't like it. There is zero connection to the plot of the main storyline or any single player stuff, really, for that matter. And the rewards for single player aren't so much that you're losing out by not doing this. You can skip this completely and have no penalty in single player. However, if you choose to do Strike Teams, you gain rewards like credits, minerals, and some weapons, too, in single player. So that's pretty cool to find some of those. But again, you can find those weapons and other items out in the world. If you do these, you also gain rewards for multiplayer in the form of mission funds, which can be spent on more strike teams, small packs that are consumables, and also equipment that you can equip on individual characters that really boost them up. Strike teams can be managed and accessed from both single player and multiplayer. So right here, we're looking at single player. Once you get the Tempest, about an hour into the game, you'll gain access to this terminal right here near the research center. This is where you'll be able to manage your strike teams. From the multiplayer menu, strike teams are very easy to access. Access, you just scroll down on the main menu down to strike teams and you have the exact same looking menu that you do in single player. Now we're going to look at the process of actually deploying your strike teams, completing missions, getting rewards, and everything in between. So let's start with the first tab over here. This is a look at your list of strike teams. And here you can check their level, their experience, different traits that they might have. And traits can come with recruitment, I've found. When you first recruit a team, they can come with a trait. But most of them are earned by succeeding or failing at missions. And we'll look more at that when we go over to the missions tab. In this tab, you can also recruit more strike teams with mission funds, and that's what you earn on your missions that you succeed on. As you can tell, I have insufficient funds to actually recruit my fourth team. You can recruit a total of six teams, and each time you recruit a new team, that amount increases. So, for example, my third team cost me 80 mission funds. My fourth team is going to cost me 120, and it's going to kick up by 40 every single time. You can also retire a team if they have too many negative traits or you just want to build up a new one. As you can tell at the very bottom of the screen, there's a button to retire this team. So if I choose to do that, you can do that, delete that team and start all the way at the beginning. If you want to learn more about each specific team, you have a button to view their traits. And these are going to be very important. Again, we're going to kind of explain how these work, but you have different effectiveness ratings versus different mission traits. And this is going to be kind of a comparison contrast thing that you'll have to scroll through and always keep in mind when you're sending your teams on missions. The second tab is all about missions, and we're going to talk about everything that you need to know about these missions. So first off, all missions have a time required to complete, and this is in real time. So as you can tell, this mission is eliminate supply ships on the right side of the screen. You can see a time required to complete it. That's how long it'll take your strike team to actually complete the mission. So 55 minutes and 19 seconds. And then there's also an expiration time. That's 22 hours. So missions have an expiration time where they disappear after that point and they can no longer be done after that point. So you do need to do those missions before they expire. Most of the time, you're not going to get to all of them unless you're really on top of it. I've found that new missions appear pretty frequently. So if you're worried about missions expiring and missing them, I feel like it's hard to run out of missions unless you're really on top of it at all times. Missions have a difficulty and an enemy type. And the best way to recognize that is just the big bubbles on the bottom. So as you can tell, eliminate supply ships. This has a bronze difficulty and the remnant is the enemy. So if we compare it to this one, bronze difficulty and cat. This one is silver difficulty, remnant, gold remnant, and there should be an outlaw somewhere. This one is bronze and outlaw. So you always want to keep the enemy type and the difficulty in mind. And like multiplayer, low level strike teams should start with bronze missions. So just as an example, my tango team is my second tango team. I don't know why I have two is level five here. 
this level five team is really only going to be able to handle bronze missions and that's something i always need to keep in mind i probably shouldn't send them on silver missions because they won't you know likely be able to complete it so just for an example let's select this one and look at the chance of success so this is what you're looking at when you actually want to send one of your teams on a mission you have their chance of success which depends on their level and also their traits we're going to talk more about traits in a second but yeah as you can tell we have 94 94 with my high level ones but 86 so a little bit lower but my level li level five excuse me strike team can certainly handle a bronze mission for the sake of just showing you guys i'm going to click on this one as well this is a silver mission my bronze team my level five team excuse me has a 38 percent chance of success so not very likely they're going to be able to complete this and then we move up to the higher levels 81 percent chance and 81 percent chance that's kind of how the difficulty works again just for example's sake let's click on this one and look at the gold so my level 14 team has an 18 percent chance of success here 25 percent chance with level 12 because of traits and then six percent chance with my level five so there's kind of the difficulty curve in terms of missions generally speaking if you're below level 10 you probably only want to stick to bronze if you're level 10 to 20 you want to stick with silver and then 20 plus probably wants to stick with gold directing our attention to the right side of the screen once again with this mission you can tell that you have mission traits rewards and pathfinder rewards so mission traits are specific to each mission and you can think of these as multipliers and you have to compare them to your specific strike team so for example eliminate supply ships this mission trait the mission traits for this mission are no room for error alien presence and remnant the rewards are five mission funds which is you know decent that's what you'll get out of most bronze missions and then you'll get a bronze credit loot box and a bronze material loot box for your pathfinder in single player so the normal rewards is really just for multiplayer that's the only place where you can use mission funds the pathfinder rewards are for single player so let's direct our attention again towards the mission traits so as we can see we have remnant for this mission if i go over and look at my strike teams i have a remnant specialist as a positive trait so just looking at the trait here i get plus 10 effectiveness against the remnant with my tango level 12 strike team so if I click on this one and scroll over this should give me a higher chance of success now normally your higher level strike teams are gonna have a higher chance but as you can tell Yankee is level 14 tango is level 12 they have the same chance of success purely because of the remnant specialist trait on this squad so that is definitely a squad I'm gonna want to send on this mission if I want a higher chance to succeed a final thing to note about traits is that unless you see a trait that matches up there is no effect on your squad so just to demonstrate this simply again we have this mission right here no room for error alien presence and remnant are the mission traits so if i decide to send tango squad this level five tango squad they have the traits of elite and stealthy neither of those match up with the mission traits so i don't really have to worry there's no negative no extra negative no extra positive unless i have an overall positive like elite which is just plus five to overall effectiveness but this isn't something i need to worry about because they don't match up you also have a special type of mission called apex mission so this one right here is a normal one how you can tell if one's apex is this obviously you have this orange looking a symbol here for apex and right now we have three available and so these are special missions and actually if you click on it you can choose to play through the mission in multiplayer with all of those parameters or send a strike team to just go ahead and do it for yourself so i don't think it really makes a difference in terms of rewards or anything like that you will get xp for your multiplayer characters if you actually play it obviously and everything that goes along with that but usually these offer better rewards so let's just compare um this right here this bronze missions 10 mission funds and then this normal one is five mission funds so as you can tell i get double the mission funds for completing this specific one or any of these actual apex missions so my advice is to do these first if you can if you have apex missions on the board you should get them done unless they're gold and you just don't have you know a high enough team or silver you don't have a high enough squad to actually handle them so we're going to go ahead and send out my strike teams on missions they're not on missions right now so i just want to do this as a demonstration thing for this video so as you can tell i've got three different apex missions but one of them is gold and i just don't have high enough chance 25 percent is my highest chance i don't think that's worth it personally so i do have two bronze apex missions and this one right here is actually an event it's for drac as you can tell from the single player so watch out for these they're going to do cool little events which is a really cool little mechanic there 
So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and send my Tango level 5 squad just because I want them to level up quickly. I know that 94 and 93 percent chance is pretty much, you know, going to work no matter what. But I'm going to go ahead and send my level 5 Tango squad on that. So as you can tell, once I deploy them, the, you know, the screen changes a little bit. We have an 86 percent chance of success and it tells us the time remaining down to the second. So that's pretty cool. So before I send my other strike team on this mission right here that I know I'm going to send them on, which has outlaw alien presence and scary i'm going to send my other team on another mission and i know that my other teams are pretty high leveled so i'm going to go ahead and go for this silver mission which has a remnant trait so because of that i'm going to go ahead and send my remnant specialist on this mission i know that you know the yankee level 14 uh, is a higher level that's nice but because of that special trait right there i have the same amount of success with the lower level squad so i'm going to go ahead and send my level 12 on that mission as you can tell we have the percentage chance of success and the time remaining. So because, you know, you kind of prioritize the apex missions, I'm going to send my final strike team here on that. I know that level 14 is pretty over leveled for bronze. But again, if I want to maximize my mission funds, I'm going to send them here so I can get as many mission funds as possible. So now all three of my teams are on missions now, and it's pretty much playing the waiting game. I have to wait until I can collect their rewards. And you can also check on them in this menu right here. After you've let the time required again in real time run through in real hours, you'll have to go back and complete the missions, debrief them in order to get your rewards. So I'm showing you guys this right here. And somehow I failed all three of these. But this is a good example because I want to show off a few things. First off, I failed this one with a level 14. It was a silver. I had a really high chance. You can still fail. So you should expect your high chance missions to fail every now and then. This one was a gold mission with my level 12 squad. I did get a lot of XP. As you can tell, if you send a squad on a high level mission and they fail you risk a negative trait but you also get a lot of experience and then finally I failed my last one all three that's never happened to me but with this one I got some experience and a trait and I'm really glad that this showed me this because I wouldn't have known otherwise this trait is actually not a negative it's a positive so success or fail I think you can get positive or negative traits so we're going to scroll over to my strike teams and look at tango squad view traits and see that stealthy is now a positive trait so I have plus 10 to silent and deadly missions I failed that mission but I still got a positive trait out of it unfortunately I didn't get any mission funds as you can tell it's still 95 in the top right and that kind of sucks the third and final tab is exclusive to single player because this is where you redeem your Pathfinder rewards. So you'll get loot boxes for every type of thing that you're going to get a reward for. So research data, materials, actual items, stuff like that. So that's where you actually redeem that stuff. When you redeem the loot boxes, this is what it actually looks like. And you'll get smaller rewards, obviously, for bronze loot packs and higher rewards for silver and gold loot packs. And the gold ones are pretty substantial, actually. Right there, I got a Sidewinder, a rare weapon. So you can get some pretty cool stuff out of this but nothing that you can't just find out in the world already to close out the video we're going to take a quick look at the apex hq app and this is pretty cool i think this is available on ios and android i know it's definitely available on ios in the us because that's what i use but anyways you can do everything that you can do in game except actually play you could do so much in this app you can deploy your strike teams you know debrief them collect rewards level up your characters individually rename them track challenges and collections look at leaderboards it's pretty impressive it's pretty robust and it runs very well it's very nice to look at it's really a good companion app my one complaint however is that you can't mess with your strike teams or do anything while you're in a multiplayer lobby and you may be thinking obviously you can't but it's kind of annoying because sometimes you are waiting on people to ready up and get ready for a specific mission that you're doing whatever it may be so it would be nice to be able to mess with that stuff while you're waiting but unfortunately you cannot other than that I totally recommend this if you're really into strike teams you want to maximize those single player rewards and your mission funds for multiplayer while you're at work or school wherever it may be the apex HQ app is really awesome it works very well and I highly recommend it if you're into this all right guys that is everything that I know about strike teams I think that's almost everything that there is to know maybe a little bit of nuances here and there but I hope this helped you out and if you learned something new or just enjoyed the video remember to hit that like button don't don't forget to subscribe for tips and tricks guides multiplayer and my stream playthrough of andromeda again that's returning tomorrow and throughout the weekend so hope to see you guys there hope you enjoyed this video thanks so much for watching and i'll talk to you next time